Thanks very much to all our speakers. And we can open the floor now to questions for any of the three speakers. And we have a roaming mic. So, My question's for Monica. Um, we actually have an action in our brand new strategic plan around reading list, having developing a strategy for reading list. So I was very interested in your talk, particularly the first bit where you kind of pitched the benefits to everybody and how it works. And I was just wondering, I, I can totally understand the challenges you've had around getting academics to engage. I think that would be familiar to all of us. I was just wondering whether you've made any, any attempt or considered approaching senior management within the university to have a university policy around reading lists to try and have a maybe top-down approach rather than trying to persuade and coerce, which can be just exhausting for librarians sometimes. Um, I did. <laughs> I attended a few reading list conferences in the UK where reading list systems are much more embedded and there's a much greater culture and quite a few libraries would have presented about having top-down mandates and how successful it was and therefore they had 100% submission rates etc etc. So I came back, oh fantastic, that's what we need, we need a mandate. But reflecting on it when I came back I thought that doesn't fit with our culture, uh, you know, um, it just wouldn't work. I mean, there are things that have been mandated when Blackboard came, it was mm -hmm. mandated. It's only now that they're even in the 90% of, okay. of use of Blackboard and we've had it for a de uh, well over a decade. Yeah. So I just, you know, if we don't have any success, then maybe we'll try it, but I, I don't think so. I just don't think it would work. I think it'd still be coercing, but you'd be doing it with a, and not a very comfortable, yeah, and, and I don't think that would work well, to be honest. Yeah, I, I feel that the power of book budget might be more useful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, I just have a question for Sinead uh, uh, about the internship and the 11 weeks. I take it that was an unpaid internship. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. Yes. The <laughs> other thing I wanted to ask uh, was um, uh, the Take take One ste Step, that, that program, and you just mentioned that people that had expertise in an area could, could give a, a course or a class. Is that just open to the three, um, or to, to the, uh, the partners, if you like, or can anybody do that? So, yeah. I think initially um, it was just for the three because yeah. there was literally a, a road show. It just, we advertised, everybody wants to go to this one, go mm. to Mary Eye tomorrow. And, and, but I don't think, I think in terms of um, developing uh, learning mm. objects or having hosting an event mm. that's open to anybody mm. but um, the, there were two things really it was to to get people to um, get involved and offer to give training mm. and then to get people to get involved by actually going to the training right. so the first bit I think the first part of it is, is just to get uh, pe make people aware and it's only now that things are starting to be finalized mm. and developed and, and our um, libguide um, we have, I think it's next Friday, not this Friday, okay. <laughs> Friday. That, w that will be done. So I think by the 10th of June, uh, things will probably become more formal and then there, if there are going to be um, things rolled out, they'll be for everybody. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question actually for Sarah. Um, I'm just wondering about what you think about the scalability of the project because you talked a lot about how the level of collaboration that you had with the School of Marketing meant that the student engagement with the mail outs was, was very high and because of the relationship with the School of Media it was less high. I'm wondering then, is it scalable to build it up to reach out to all first years, do you think? Or where do you plan to go from here? Um, I think you could do it in a different way. There could be, um, we've thought about this, well, I've thought about this, but, you know, having a different kind of, you know, there could be li library learning at different levels, depending on the, the amount of engagement with the school. Um, MailChimp is great in that the amount of data it gives you, but it kind of analyzes the data for you as well. Um, so to scale it up for, you know, to include all students, obviously you'd need, it was just me analysing the data for this pilot. Um, you probably would need more um, staff involved. 
Um, but yeah, I think I think even it could be used not even only just for looking at first year undergraduates. I think it could be used um, to target final year students, undergraduates preparing for dissertation, and again looking at um, guides for graduates coming or postgraduates coming in. Um, so I think it has a variety of uses. Um, but again, it's about staff resourcing um, and to develop those relationships with the, each individual school to really make the tool come into its own. Thank you.